koinonia. That was the final word spelled correctly in the 2018 Scripps National Spelling Bee. No, I'm not going to ask you to spell koinonia. I have enough trouble pronouncing it. But I am going to share more about this word that we find in the Bible, and I'm going to encourage you to live your koinonia. Hi, my name is Tim Miller, and I'm a member of Christ Lutheran Church. I'm part of our Aaron Outreach Church, and I'm very excited to dive into God's Word to learn more about His love for you and me, and also how we can share that love with others. Koinonia. It's a Greek word, and no, I've had zero training in the Greek language, uh, but this word appears in the Bible 20 times, and it's often translated as fellowship, but it means much more than fellowship. It really involves a close-knit community that is bonded together in everything. We hear more about this in um, the first time it appears in Scripture, Acts 2, verse 42. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, koinonia, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Yes, this communion, this fellowship, this community uh, that the Bible refers to as koinonia is so amazing because it is focused on Christ. Yeah, it's focused on his connection to us and then our connection to each other as believers in Christ. We hear more about this in Philippians 2, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love. If any common sharing in the Spirit, koinonia in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Koinonia. What, what an incredible word. It means so much. Sometimes we can get a better understanding of a word by hearing the opposite of its definition. So someone without koinonia might say, I go to church to worship God, not to talk to others. I served my time. Now it's somebody else's turn. Somebody out without koinonia might say, every time I go to church, all they seem to talk about is money. They might also say, I'm too busy to be involved in church and especially too busy to be part of a group Bible study. Or they might say, that person just drives me crazy. I can't even stand to be around them. That's the opposite of koinonia. So how is your koinonia? Do you use your connection to Christ to bond with other brothers and sisters in Christ? Are you eager to help, support, and encourage everyone in the family of believers? Are you focused on yourself? or on everyone that you come in contact with. What about your motivation? Are you motivated by God's amazing grace? Are you motivated by his undeserved love for you in sending his son to be your savior, to redeem you, to take your place, take your sins upon him so you could spend eternity with him in heaven? Oh, that amazing grace is what motivates us to have that koinonia. And it is so awesome. But again, do people see your koinonia? Do they see it in your patience with your family? How about your patience with your coworkers, your boss, or your classmates? What about with that clerk that was rude to you right from the start? Or how about that person who voted differently from you? Do they see your koinonia, your forgiveness, your generosity, your kindness, and above all, your amazing love that comes from Christ? That Christ-like love that changes hearts. Do they see your koinonia? Having koinonia is not easy. A lot even harder than pronouncing this word. But we know that through the Holy Spirit, we can show our koinonia. We can shine in that koinonia 
to point the way to our amazing Father in Heaven. So go and live your koinonia.